The iPhone doesn't use garbage collection, it uses a reference counting system. If you want to keep a reference to an object, you have to manually call the retain method on that object. When you create an object, it will have a reference count of 1. When you're done with that object, you call the release method. For a reference count on that object which is 0, the system will automatically call the dialloc method on that object and free up the memory. Just going to create a simple Windows based application and create just a test class with a simple init method inside it. It's the usual code here, and we're just going to add a logging statement here to show that it's called that code. And also, we're going to add a deallocation method. This method gets called just before the memory for your object gets freed. Now we're just importing that class so we can use it. And now we're just going to create an instance of that class. And we're going to log to the output the retained count. For that object it should be 1. We'll just initialize it once. So if you run it open up the log window and you can see it's one there. It's initialized and it's been deallocated. So if we retain it again, it should have jumped to have a retain count of two. Now if we release it, it will go back down to one. And it should be deallocated. There we go. Now if we try to do this again, it will error. There we go. Here, I'm just creating a very simple function that returns a string. The problem here is, who calls the release method on this string object? If we release it in this getString method, then the reference count will equal zero, and it will get deallocated straight away. If a function doesn't release it, then the caller will have to. What you can't see here is that test string has not been deallocated. What we'd have to do is assign the string to a temporary variable, use it, then release it, which makes the code very ugly. There is a way around this though. Instead of releasing the object in the getString method, we issue a command called auto-release. And this tells the system to release that object at some point in the future. When you send an object the auto-release message, it is then put into the auto-release pool. The auto-release pool is simply a big collection of objects that have been sent this auto-release message. At some point in the future, like after the current event has been processed, then the system goes through every object in the auto-release pool and sends it the release message. This example shows auto-release working. This press method gets called when the user clicks on a button in the interface. It then calls the getTest method that returns the test class and auto-releases it. So if we just push a button here, I'll just clear the log. We try again, we push a button and you can see it's been deallocated and we haven't specifically called the release method. So these are the basic rules. If you get an object either by allocating new copy or mutable copy, then it will have a reference count of one and you are responsible for releasing it. And if you get an object from any other means, 
assume it's in the auto release pool and it has at least a reference count of 1. So if you don't want to use this object after the end of a method, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to call release, retain, auto release, anything. You can just leave it and it will be auto released at some point in the future.